Hey guys, welcome to another OJ Health Radio. Now, as you've seen over the last few months, we've had some content in person and uh, I wanted to get as much in person as possible. But today's guest, unfortunately due to the restrictions that we've had to do on video, even though we're probably about 10 miles from each other, but we've got an awesome artist on today. And I came across this guy <clears throat> uh, doing his first exhibition at, a for at the forum here in Norwich in December. And being a big hip hop fan, there was a picture of Biggie, there was a picture of Jay Z, a picture of Kanye West. So I'm like automatically drawn in. There's a couple of pictures I'd be like, yeah, like, they probably shouldn't have been a painter, but we'll get onto that when it comes to football. Um, but <laughs> this guy here, uh, it's really like jumped out and and kind of like different paintings that I've, I've seen before. So we've got Cohen Blackburn here uh, with the website bycohen.com. Uh, an artist here in Norwich, and we're going to have a good discussion about art, about health, about branding, about plans for the future, and and go from go from there. So, Cohen, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, nice to meet you, Ollie. Uh, yeah, I, well, I think we actually said hi. I think it was, but I think with masks and stuff like that, we it's hard. Did we right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't uh, listen in the minute, aren't you? And <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard, hard with that sort of stuff, but. Um, yeah. Tell the guys a little bit about your background. We'll go into a little bit more depth. Just like give us like the overview as to like what you do with art, the style and everything. We can see some awesome pictures. Uh, guys, if, if you're listening to the audio, go and check out the website because you'll see some of the awesome pictures that, that he's got in the background there. Yeah, so uh, I'm Kerwin Blackburn from Norwich, um, born and I grew up here. And um, I'm here to talk about my art brand, which I launched um, about 14 months ago now, at the end of 2019, which is by Kerwin. Um, it's something that I had planned for a couple of years and then I launched it at the end of that year and then really just used 2020 to, uh, in the end, just focus on the art, engross myself in it, learn about as much as possible, all the different components, just grow the brand up and make good use of 2020, which was obviously very strange for a lot of people and we all had to kind of reorient ourselves in some way. Um, so that's the art. Um, my background beyond the art is, is a little bit more um, interesting and different. Uh, I went to University of Manchester when I was 18 to study uh, international business, finance and economics, which um, is more of a sort of business commercial uh, degree, nothing to do with art. Um, I never planned to study art or do it as a full time career, as it were. I always planned to get some good practical skills and just take it from there. So I did that for three years. Then I came back to Norwich, worked in my family business for a couple of years and then went off to London about three years ago now to study a master's degree in international development, which, which was also sort of economics related, a very um, practical kind of degree in, in that area. Again, with no kind of plans to go into art as a full time thing. And then uh, off the back of that one year degree, I went to Singapore for just over a year to work in e-commerce. I was actually at an e-commerce florist, so I was selling flowers and plants to all people across Singapore, which was great fun uh, and good experience to live abroad. All the meanwhile, uh, learning lots of practical uh, work experience and, and digital skills as well to do the, the online selling there. And then it was during my time there that I started painting this range just as a hobby, just to do a couple of pieces for myself in my room. And um, it, I was playing around with a few different styles. And I hit upon this Jackson Pollock inspired portrait style, um, which was inspired by the Stone Roses artwork, which I got into while I was in Manchester, uh, incidentally. And then I, I got the Beatles picture and combined it with this new style. And I uh, was really pleased with the results. So I did a few more, did Oasis, did Paul Weller, and then just thought, you know, I'm gonna you know, do a few more and then um, see where they go. And then I think I can turn this into a bit of a range and then uh, hopefully sell some prints and some artwork. And it just it just went from there, really. Yeah, it's pretty pretty powerful, as I said. Um, with the music in, in is what like drew, drew me to that. Like, I've seen different um, exhibitions in the forum as, as you walk in, and like you've got the big floor space there. But then I was like seeing these music artists. Like, yeah, this is really cool. Uh, and it's not just like there's one genre of music. You've got multiple genres that you've been inspired by. So just yeah. Let's talk us through the way you do. I've seen the videos, and if you guys watch watch on the on the website as well, because there's some great videos of actually how you do them. But just talk us through how you actually do these paintings, because I, I look down like, hang on, these paintings, like, there must be some computer work in there or something like that. Like, it's weird. It's like the 
like opposite, like it comes through negatives or something like that. Yeah, there are a few people said, you know, asked about how well, what the process is, how I actually produce them. And they're all hand drawn. There's no computer work or no technology um, at any point. They're all hand drawn off a picture from Photoshop that I, I get the stencil image and then draw them up by hand and then paint them in, in sort of one block color. And then to get the to get the outline so you can see the picture and then have to tape all around the face um, in frog tape. If, if anyone does a bit of DIY, they'll know frog tape is really good stuff. Um, and then I put them on the floor in my garage and then throw the different layers of paint. Uh, I have to test out the different paint combinations first and just check the colors all work together and check I've got the right consistency and they'll actually you know, produce the right image. Then once the paint layers are all dry, I'll peel the tape off and to leave the image and then I'll just paint the background or do the finishing touches and then they're ready to go. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Uh you're seeing it there because um a lot of painting we get where you just like but not just like it's still intricate when, when we draw with the pencil or we draw uh, with different paints and stuff but to add that creativity but also kind of like it's a controlled chaos hmm. that, that's on that's there like, that, like i'll use that term control chaos yeah, yeah. Um, I, since i've been doing the um the online uh, advertising on Facebook and Instagram since about six months ago. I get hit with so many artists on Instagram now. All the sponsored posts are all videos like mine, people sort of in, on their kitchen table doing their own style. So it's really interesting to see all the different techniques that people use. But um, I'm really pleased with the, the sort of the throwing the paint Jackson Pollock style that I've come across because I've not really seen another one that matches that the kind of in that same sort of area. So uh, I'm really pleased with the style. I'm, I'm just focusing on growing that. And you can do the same painting twice, even, right? No, yeah, it's no, so it's uh, everything is a literal, literally a one-off. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you have the do you have the canvases that that people buy the originals that people can buy? Yeah, I've sold a few of the originals. I sold a few at the forum. Um, all along, I've been pushing the prints more because um, this is ultimately the, the aim of this is to create an income stream for myself, okay. and the print and the prints are much more scalable than just the originals. So. In theory, if I get the good formula for learning how to sell online, uh, the right sort of customer demographics and so on, and then in theory, the prints can just be reproduced whenever um, and they can be scaled up as much as possible. So I've been looking at it from the prints point of view and that there's a much more realistic price point for most people. Um, so yeah, the prints has been the focus and that's also influenced the style of picture that I've gone for, the types of colors I've used. Um, at the start, I used a few different sort of metallic uh, textures and colors, but they're actually harder to turn to a print, they're harder to photograph. So that has influenced the style and how they've evolved as well, which is an interesting sort of learning experience for me um, in learning how to grow a brand and have, having to kind of see it evolve. Uh, so that's a good kind of part of it too. When you actually have the canvas, because it's something I wonder, I've got um, in my little Sam's eye, there's all these cartoon like hand drawn pictures, but then um, once I get the second frame for, for the Jay Z picture, for I'm going to put mine like, over there, the Biggie and Jay-Z ones, but um, how do you get it from the canvas to then the digital image? Like, is it a scan mm. as, as such? How do you do that? No, yes, yeah, good question. Um, when I was 18, about eight years ago now, I launched a, a, a business doing some art, doing some paintings, and they were the Seascape ones that are on my website now. And back then, I don't, I'm not sure the technology was available or it wasn't as sophisticated as now. But um, back then I took them all to a scanner and got them all scanned up professionally, but that was quite expensive. And I had eight paintings in that range and now I've got sort of 30, 40. So it would be very expensive to do all the scanning. So I thought the, the most practical way is just to teach myself how to um, do the studio photography myself, which is the other option really, which means getting an easel set up in my, in my house somewhere and then uh, getting the studio lights, which, I've, which I bought get my camera on a tripod and do the actual photography and then put them into Photoshop and then do the post-production and turn them into the prints that way rather than the scanning, which would involve taking them somewhere else and I'd sort of lose control over the, the images. And yeah, this is a lot, this is obviously a much more cost-effective version as well, doing it all myself. Um, so yeah, that's been a, I didn't, I didn't even know it was possible to just take them on your own. I thought scanning was the only way, but um, yeah, that's, it's been working really well for me so far. Yeah. I just switched my, my microphone um, 
Right. Brilliant. I'm like, that's typical. The one time they want to drill, I'm recording a podcast. Um, <laughs> I've got to unmute myself. As I suppose, like, every single person has. I think it's one of the quotes of, like, 2020 and 2021. You're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you started selling before the pandemic, right? Before lockdown. Yeah. yeah so How did it how has it changed for you since then? Um, oh, it's not, it's not really changed since the pandemic because the, the aim at the start of 2020 was to grow the online print business. So it's been the same, it's, it, it's been the same focus all along. I've just had so much more time and um, opportunity to spend, just literally learn about all the different parts and get them all working properly. I actually started a new job in March when lockdown started in nearly a year ago now. Um, that was going to be in Manchester. Um, yeah. I didn't actually have time to even move to the city and or meet anyone or go to the office. So I did just over three months from my bedroom in Norwich uh, for this company in Manchester and then realised, you know, I, it wouldn't be sensible doing this for the rest of the year. So I decided to leave and just um, spend the rest of 2020 on my art, um, which was uh, allowed me all the time to just learn about all the components, learning about how to code my own website, um, get all the features and functionality the way I wanted them to learn about the Facebook advertising and all the technical bits and um, have time to make the videos which are on my website too and yeah I thought the decision was kind of do I stick with what I'm doing you know in all this uncertainty but I thought that the best return on my time would be to work on the art which was one of my big goals for 2020 anyway so it was a no-brainer in the end uh, and yeah I'm really pleased with how 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 much I've learned and how much it's come along in the last sort of six months. That's cool. Yeah. Well, one more, I'm just going to change my microphone. There we go. I think that's AirPods Pro. You still hear me? I can, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> let me turn you up on here. There we go. Yeah, sorry about that. Like, as I said, like the neighbor, like, I thought he was only just drilling one hole, but um, he's literally like, just start a drill in. Like, as we said, it's, it's unplugged and there's not going to be the editing on it. So, um, yeah, that, that's <laughs> so what, what does art actually mean to you? If you were to say, like, uh, where I've said, like, music is like literally it's in my blood, like, well, and it's helped me through a lot of things. What is your story with art? Why art? Yeah, um, good question. Um, yeah, so getting a little bit more abstract now. Um, when I was, at, I remember at nursery when I was about two years old, I remember we used to do all the painting arts and craft sessions. And in particular, it was the painting that connected with me so, so deeply, I think. And I remember at that age, I used to, uh, not to blow my own trumpet too much, but I remember I used to kind of really connect and find it quite sort of easy. And um, I remember just how my pieces of just, at age two, I remember just how they were kind of uh, really stood out and they were kind of much better than than a lot of other people that they were producing at the time. And since then, I've always felt the connection to actually painting in particular. I've always just felt it's something that I've been able to do well. Uh, I think as a um, sort of personality trait, I think I'm quite a kinesthetic learner, I think is the term, which means I'm quite visual and quite practical. Yeah. Um, and I've always done it as a hobby um done it at school quite a bit and then this is a hobby in summer holidays and uh, weekends growing up I've done a few pieces for my house and then uh yeah when I was 18 I had the first go at launching an art business uh for a couple of years which was a good experience and then it's just in the last sort of 18 months with my current style just hit across this new style uh, I've had all this time now to to do more content and do more paintings and it's just gone from there but yeah the, the art and also graphic design is was a big thing at school for me one of my best subjects it's that kind of visual creative thing has always just resonated really strongly with me and in particular painting so I've always felt really sort of just naturally inclined towards this yeah um it's, it's hard to explain really I don't know where, where it came from initially uh like you with your music I guess I guess it is something you've always felt you've had the connection there and yeah, I can't explain why, but it's always been a just a fun hobby and just uh, escapism and a really sort of individual thing for me. So yeah, I've run with it so far and it's going well. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely something we mentioned escapism there. Like when I think about music for myself, ironically, I remember 
my granddad used to um, be a painter uh, and it was always oil painting and he used to like teach me like oil painting and I used to do a lot of artwork and, and things then but it was crazy like during like March last year like I, I picked up like an A3 pad and then just started like drawing some Avengers and stuff like that just like pencil drawings and things so I hadn't actually drawn anything probably for about seven or eight years but the creative okay. side of music it's just I can feel that when you get pulled towards it and hmm. the escapism is something where I didn't realize as well myself when when the gyms closed how much the gyms like were still a coping mechanism for me uh, right. with the training with competing in bodybuilding years ago and everything like that um and I thought I had it more under balance but then I'm like I'd sold all my music equipment when it was when I'd done my last show in 2012 because I just wasn't using right. it. Um, and then suddenly I was like, always like written stuff or I had this like draw of like, I suppose you may, may get that with pictures as well where I'll hear some music and hear it in layers. So, mm. and like, diff like you might see a picture in layers and things like that. Um, yeah. But then I was like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get this. But that escapism, as I think for a lot of people in different ways, they've had to find some form of escapism over 2020 just to, push through and get through right yeah yeah and I think um it's interesting you say you see hear things in layers and I think I think I'm quite a visual thinker so when I'm thinking or talking about things I'll, I think I'll picture visual diagrams in my head while I'm explaining or trying to understand things I think it that it comes from a if it's a DNA trait or a personality trait but certainly different sort of cognitive ways of of interacting with the world and yeah, I'm, I mean, someone more qualified on this subject will probably be able to explain it better than I am. But I think, yeah, just um, certain activities do grab you. And um, in terms of escapism, I, I totally agree. When I was doing the first few of, uh, paintings of this range, I was actually living in Singapore. Uh -huh. uh, and then it was, it was it's such a, it was quite a sort of demanding, tiring job out there, working in the startup, getting some really good experience. And because of the heat out there, it was so exhausting sometimes. So I used to find that on weekends or evenings, what I really liked was just getting away from the, the laptop, no screens, just getting down with the canvas and pencil and paintbrush. And it was a really nice way just to switch off from the all the digital virtual world that even before the pandemic that we were spending so much time in, it was a really nice way just to turn off technology and just engross myself in in something like right in front of me. And, and it was kind of um, very individualistic. And yeah, it was kind of uh, just a nice complete switch off from all the digital technology that we have so often do you find you like get into a flow state as such and just definitely yeah flies? yeah it's, it's a really nice um state when you get into that um that that flow mindset and um i do find it with the drawing that when i'm you know i'll, I'll get to the point where time seems to disappear and you kind of lose sense of all other distractions and it's a it's a nice um feeling when you get to that stage and um yeah i'd recommend also for people sort of during as we carry on with the lockdown and just in, just beyond in general to have a creative outlet of some sort um just to have a complete change from their from their day-to-day -day, whatever that may be it's just uh, i think it's nice just to use a completely different part of your brain um and just have that total switch off and i think it's a good way to refresh and to improve your performance at, at your day job or whatever that may be i think it's a really important um healthy kind of activity to have yeah it came up on a um have you uh, explored clubhouse at all the the new app that everyone's like this ios <laughs> based but it's just audio right. only so uh, um, you go in there and it's like oh, you have to have an invite with us if i've got like a few invites anyway so after this call i can i can invite you to an app or anything. you just have to send me your number um but it's, it's essentially like a radio station sort of thing. People get these rooms and they start chatting and then you, you become a moderator if you want, if someone pulls you in. But an old client of mine, um, his name's Rick Barker, and he's very well known in the, in the music industry. He's manager of like really oh, some, some big names, but he had this, he does this hour hour, like at 3 p.m. It's like 9 a.m. Central time where he's from in Nashville. And, uh, he was talking about a quote how and it was something to do with like in order to we have to work harder than yesterday to be to move forward something like that and it it just resonated with me that is it actually working harder or is it working smarter because we have to pull back in order to move forward so just kind of like what you just said there um 
kind of resonated with me when it when it comes to that side of things we have to have this downtime but why can't we actually be creative in that downtime which is something that moves us forward yeah no i think that the, you touched upon it the whole working hard be working smart in in this the sort of early parts of my career over the last few years that's been something that i've been very conscious of making sure that i'm working smart and making the, the most effective decisions and using my time in the best areas rather than just working hard and just being addicted to busyness so with, with my art as well i could i could spend a lot of time on on bits that i'm going to have the best output but i think you know there's lots of different components so i have to make sure i'm working smart on the best uh, the most important parts and you know the 80 20 rule yeah i think that's a part of it as well in, in growing any or in trying to you know do anything and uh create or build anything i think focusing on the 20 percent that's going to have the best returns um so yeah working smart is is definitely something that i kind of am conscious of every day yeah yeah sorry i actually just managed to like i don't, can't remember the last time i got a zip stuck and uh, my zip just got stuck and i'm like ah, I'm trying to get it off <laughs> as you were asking about like what's the best place to look and all this sort of stuff and i'm, I'm the one that has the the drilling noise and then the zip getting stuck um, it's like when we talk about flow state as well, I always found it really hard to describe it. I don't know if whether you have, but then mm. have you seen Disney Soul, the film on Disney Plus? No. <laughs> oh my God. It, it's so Jamie Foxx in and he's a keyboard player. Uh, or, right. or, yeah, he plays the keys, a uh, jazz pianist. And there's one bit in there. I won't go into the depth of it because if you watch it, like this is right at the start it talks about, but just Disney have a way of, they had inside out where it was like going into someone's brain and like predisposed to like depression, sad, angry, pleasure, joy, and all this sort of stuff. But it's by the same makers of that. And he's just playing the keys in this band. And then suddenly everything blurs around him. And it's just him there, like as if he's on a green screen, you can't see anything else. And I was just uh, trying to explain to someone like flow state. And then I watched that and I said, you want to know what being in the flow state is like? It's like that. So like, just making music or something like that. And I assume that it's similar to that when you get into the zone with, with mm. the actual paint side of things. How long does a painting actually take you? Um, the whole, each portrait is about 40 to 50 hours through all the different stages. Uh, so that'll be over a few weeks typically. Um, and, but yeah, um, I certainly do sort of five, six hours at a stretch um, on the, the painting or whatever. And it's a nice, uh, I don't like you say I don't it's hard to describe um, but it's something that I think people have experienced at some point in their work they'll probably be familiar with the, the sensation of kind of they're so engrossed and they're they're doing it well and they're comfortable with it so that the, the sort of sense of all other everything else sort of falls away and you're so literally so you've got tunnel vision about the task that you're on and yeah, it's a nice kind of sensation where you, you you know you kind of just at one with whatever you're doing, and you can also get it. I think when you're you're having a good run and you get into a good rhythm, and you can just kind of go into a trance-like state almost. Um, but it's the absence of sort of awareness of any other thought, I think, or or maybe maybe thought entirely because your your body kind of takes over and you're just in the rhythm of whatever you're doing, and it's a it's a yeah, I think it comes with practice and when you start to get good at something and when you're doing something you enjoy that connects with you, uh, I think it's something that people should kind of, you can't really, I don't, don't think you can aim for it as such, but it's something to, to sort of aspire towards in whatever job you're doing, whatever work you're doing. Yeah, I've found, so with the stuff I do health-wise with mindset work and we get like a little bit of life coaching and there's some meditation stuff in there. Um, I've found when people can't meditate, I say, I don't believe anyone can't meditate because they're just, oh, my mind is too, too busy. But that's essentially what it is. It's not, it's just moving the thoughts around it as such, I find, until you get a clear path. And the busier you are, I think, the more you need to look into meditation just to try and calm yeah. things down. But I've kind of described the feeling of when you actually get into this, like actually being in the present moment, like when mm -hmm. you're meditating, like you're just there. Um, there's a film called The Peaceful Warrior. Uh, it's a true story by a gymnast in like the 50s or 60s called Dan Millman. And then he says like, they're walking through this park and he said, what's going on? His mentor says, what's going on? And he said, nothing's going on. He's like, There's never nothing going on. And then he just zones in, there's like a bird plucking at a tree. 
there's a dog catching a frisbee there's a bee trying to get pollen from the flowers and then there's there's a couple that like, having a kiss in the park all this sort of stuff and then there's so much going on but we forget like to even zone into it and i think that like it's interesting like we look at art and there's a story like from everything that's gone on to build that picture together just like i look at with music like there's a story to have the bass line with the drums and then like the patterns of the hi-hat and then there's like some lead in there and all that sort of stuff and i think it's really cool just to to see it all come together like that and then using it like potentially as kind of like a mindfulness side of things so i found mm -hmm. like when people struggle to meditate as you said like find that thing that allows you to just be in that flow state to actually be potentially like in the moment yeah and like you do it without realizing yeah it's, i think it's the equivalent i guess of sort of watching your own breath as it were you're literally just your focal point is whatever you're doing that might be not just painting but anything creative or just any work activity that you're you're engrossed in um i think it's a really with all the information and uncertainty in the world and all the news every day it's you know and social media feeds are just go, going crazy each hour i think being totally present and focused in in the thing you're doing at the time is so so valuable now more than ever i guess definitely definitely I, I would definitely agree with that so if someone wanted to start painting start making artwork like how would you recommend they get started uh, <laughs> good question um i've not thought about it like that but i guess well it depends what your your aim is if you're very um if you're starting right from the top i guess pick a medium that you um that you enjoy or that interest you in some ways that might be painting might be drawing it might be uh what else origami or i don't know just off my head um <laughs> just pick, pick the right sort of medium and then if you're painting do you want to do watercolor acrylic oil um i'd recommend acrylic that's what i do so just just pick something by you can i mean for painting you can buy a starter kit for, for not very much at all get a couple of little canvases or um paper or just and just i think just start and just the point is just to to sort of do something in it that you'll naturally evolve and it will evolve and you'll get better and you'll enjoy it more. You'll get a sense of the bits you like, bits you don't. Um, and I pick something that interests you as a subject as well. I do the, the music um, faces because these, these kind of people interest me. Lots of people do nature because they like flowers or they like the, the seaside or things. Um, it's so at the start, I guess, is a fun thing. So just make, make it as fun as possible. Um, there's lots of tutorials online, actually. I, I recorded one um, a few days ago, which I'm going to be releasing quite soon, hopefully. <laughs> um, so there's lots of information online about all different techniques and different ways that you can do drawing or do different painting, um, different parts of the painting. So, yeah, there's lots of information online and on YouTube and TikTok and all the other platforms. So but I think the point is just to, to, do, to do it and then, and then just see. Really. Yeah. Yeah, I see some like very ab abstract stuff from some of my friends and you think that there is something behind it, but to some people it's just like complete chaos. But then you're actually like, there's an idea that's just got out there. And I think like, a lot of people like myself included, like in the past, they thought like art has to be perfect as in to the point of like, we've got to get those curves exactly right. But it's also it's a perception of, of like what yeah. someone sees right and someone's everyone's views on it are different right yeah so it's just i mean yeah if it art can be whatever you want it to um i must have quote the beauty is in the eye of the beholder so yeah. it's a case of yeah if you know what's what do you want to do with it is it just a fun thing for yourself for me it's it's a question of making sure that they can be rec my paintings can be recognized as the people they're meant to be so they have to be sort of accurate in that sense, but yeah, um, not not all painting has to be obviously for commercial reasons. So it's just a case of um, what you want to get out of it. Just you want to get a bit of realization and fun, or do you want to test yourself and and try and produce the perfect portrait? So um, yeah, I think the key is just to have fun and and just do what you want. No rules. Yes, yeah, cool, definitely. And um, just to start rounding up with that, like, what ideas have you got? moving forward anyone any in particular paintings that you're looking at or what's coming up painting wise uh i've got about four on the go at the minute i've got uh john lennon kate moss marvin gay um and i think twiggy as well was a request of the forum from someone 
So um, they're four more that kind of fit within the, the style and theme that I've got at the minute. And then um, a few more ideas for the next few months, but we'll see. But um, a, a big part of what I've had to uh, bear in mind is how to grow the business. So what are the components of does the business need that will help me to sell more? Because just doing more of the same will get you the same results. So on the back of that, I'm spending more time on videos at the minute, getting more um, interactive content like that filming some tutorials and playing around with some vlog type ideas just to build this whole new dimension um, to my brand and yeah think about all the, the all the other parts that will take me to the next level that I want to get to and get more exposure get um, better conversions on my website and so on so it's weak in the website with all improvements as I go lots of different parts so so as I said at the start it's more than just an art hobby for me it's it's a it's a business kind of uh, a rounded kind of focus with all the different components that all have to be working together. Um, I think it's cool, like having your head screwed on so much about that, because um, it can get overwhelming when you try and turn something that you're passionate about into a into an actual business, right? And then yeah. you could potentially lose a love of it. So you've got this, like mm-hmm. you've had the business side of things of the education, and now you're actually implementing it into your passion. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, no, that's, that. yeah, yeah. When I started my business, when I launched my art business which was called Cohen Art Collections Limited in 2012. Um, when I was 18, I was quite sort of green and naive around a lot of these subjects. And I didn't appreciate how much work would have to go into building a whole brand that people, you know, actually exchange their real money for. And uh, so it's taken a few years of experience and getting the commercial knowledge and also some work experience, some sales experience, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased now that all the different components are kind of clicking together. And yeah, I, I just enjoy the process of building a brand and having all the different components to solve. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I, I said about the football side of things, I, I'm a Man United fan. So um, no I was like, yeah, I, I just realized that there we are, there's a picture of Old Trafford like on the wall. But oh, yeah. um, <laughs> m- maybe I'll switch that for, that'll be where the biggie picture will go or something like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, even, even though they are, I think you had, was it the Brother logo? Uh, yeah. So, oh, no, that was on the Oasis one, wasn't it? Yeah, so on Liam Gallagher, there's the Brother text above his head, which is actually from a, a, a photo shoot in the mid-90s of uh, Liam and Noel in the old City shirt. So Brother um, was a sponsor of Manchester City in the in the 90s. But that's a little subtle nod there. The, yeah, I, the, I, could, I could tell when I saw it. Yeah. I'm like, why has he got Brother? He's a, <laughs> a Man City fan, <laughs> and also obviously Noel being the brother, it all kind of fits well. And also I've got, yeah. got the big, uh, the Manchester City retro badge, which was a, is a giant one, which was on display in the forum. Uh, my dad's from Manchester, so uh, he got me into the into the football, and uh, that's that's why I went to study there. Uh, obviously, you're not you're not a glory hunter fan like me, where like I, <laughs> no. I, I, the first time I saw Man United play was against Norwich, and they won, and I'm like, oh, I'll support Man. This is like. <laughs> Uh, no, I so. no I, I did go to main road in the when was it in the late 90s and yeah days. Days. in rubbish so i've seen i've seen a bit of both sides yeah <laughs> yeah we're we're seeing that well obviously being top now is, is a bit different but like yeah. we're seeing both sides of it this this end now so um i think i get to a point where, where man united fans won't actually be classed as glory hunter fans like for a bit no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, anyway <laughs> on that note um how can people get in touch with you? How can people buy your prints, buy buy your actual uh, work, um, and and you do actual commissions, right, as well? Yeah. So my website is bycohen.com. That's b y k e r w i n dot com, and that's got my links to my Instagram account, which is Cohen Blackburn, and my Facebook page, which is by Cohen Art. And uh, yeah, all the pictures and videos will be on there. You can order through my website. All paintings are available as uh, paper prints of, uh, of a museum standard. And they are available with worldwide shipping. Um, they take about seven to 10 days currently uh, to arrive in the UK. Um, so yeah, take a look. There's different sizes available for depending on which ones you like, what size you've got available and uh, what you're looking for. And yeah, I do commissions as well. So drop me a, a message with any uh, custom requests or sub- suggestions for who I should be painting next. Um, they're all really helpful to help me decide. Get some Man United players on there. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> that no, all good. All good. I saw a picture that um, someone had the biggie print on on a jumper. Have you 
been, or was that him put the print on the jumper? No, that was um, someone who bought the prints back in the summer a few months ago um, for themselves. And then I did a message on Facebook. Um, I also do clothing, you know, give me a chat if you want any clothing uh, custom requests. I've done a few before and just to see. And then he came back to so yeah, said, I've got the print. I want the same image that I can wear as well. So he's now got two, <laughs> two versions. Nice. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, ironically, like the biggie print, um, so I saw it and I'm like, so I just chuck the money to get the full size one. But um, is it on? I think it was on. It was a TV show which has got that King Biggie print on there. And like, I really want that in full, full like size. Like at some point. Is it? Was it in New York? There's a big mural somewhere. There's a mural in New York, but there's like, I wasn't. I've seen the mural. Um, it's in Brooklyn. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I, I remember I it was a mistake, but um, I was over in Brooklyn about two years ago now, maybe three years ago, and um, it would have been 2018 because that's when I got this laptop for, from the Apple store in Brooklyn. It's kind of cool, they because of the British accent, they gave you a discount. I'm like, sweet, but <laughs> I then went in to do um, some work stuff in uh, to see in actual Manhattan, came back and got off the wrong tube stop, so um. I got off and it was 11 p.m. at night and I got off the wrong end of like Atlantic Avenue, I think it was. And it was like right like, near, it was actually near um, the mural and I had to get a, an Uber. So it was like right in one of the projects. So I don't know exactly what project it was. I was just like very out of place there. Um, and I like, just got an Uber to get out of it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get off the wrong stop when, when, when I'm there. But we actually drove past the mural. Um, but I, know, I just know it's in Brooklyn, just where it actually is. But no, the, the TV show, I think it was something something like Power, I think it was, that, that might have been on Power. Um, just one of the guys had it in, in the office. And yeah, so um, I think yeah, eventually that, I'll, I'll get the full size one. <laughs> yeah, this it's one of the first uh, paints I did. It's such an iconic image, obviously, with the crown. And um, yeah, it's, it's one of the decisions I have to make is that when I go along, do I just pick the most well-known commercial images of the most famous people like David Bowie and uh, Biggie and so on. Um, and on the one hand, that's good because that's it's proven people like those images, but also I like to get a good mix of my own kind of people like Richard Ashcroft and Ian Brown and other people like that. So I, it's, yeah, it's a good to get a good mix of, of um, the most famous images, but also some of my own and uh, get a good twist on some different, different pop art styles. Yeah. yeah, it's like that balance of like growing the business and then keeping yeah. your personality in there as well. Exactly, yeah. But last thing, um, which I like to ask people, I missed the last couple of uh, episodes of asking this question, but if you had a big billboard to give someone advice on life, what would you put on it or what would you say on it? Uh, <laughs> that's a question I've never heard before. Um, no. Take some time if you need to. Yeah. Um, uh yeah that's a really certainly a billboard that's a very unusual yeah just like something like you're driving along, along a highway and then suddenly it's there in your face and you need yeah, to I, actually, yeah I guess it would have to be a, a couple of simple motivational quotes or not not just motivational quotes because there's, there's too many of those on, on the internet at the minute but um I guess uh, some key messages um key what was the question again sorry <laughs> so a motiv like that's about start something to help them through life like through the struggles everything like that and, and to move uh, forward i would i would make sure that your career is something that interests you and that you enjoy to a degree and that really clicks with you um obviously work will ultimately no matter you know how much you enjoy something it's still there'll still be parts of it which is still work and still hard work um which is an enjoyable thing in itself if you like the thing but i would yeah i would first of all make sure you're job and career is oriented around something that you really like and that you've got a good mission and purpose to what you're doing because you spend so much of your time with your work and it dictates so much, you know, most of your thoughts. So it influences so much your life. I would get a really good career that you're interested in, you, you, that you're excited about sort of getting up for and that gives you a good purpose. Uh, so that's the first broad one. Secondly, I would say follow the process. It's, mm -hmm. um, 
something that I literally with my painters have to follow each step of the process through to get the result. And I think, um, you know, sports teams talk about it and there's a book called Obstacle is the Way, which is quite a famous one among many. Ryan Holiday one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially in America. And there's a chapter called, I think it's Follow the Process. And it talks about just when you're trying to, you know, build a career or do anything or that the question is, the, the thing is to just focus on the step in front of you, do each thing well, each part will lead to the next part. So if you're building a brand, each step will lead to the next step if you do the first one right. Um, it's really, yeah, the mindfulness, again, is focusing totally on the present moment and the single thing in front of you. And you have to, you have to sort of take life that way. Um, so that's two. I feel there should be a third just to get a nice... Go for it. Find um, the third one. <laughs> what would I say? I'd say... Um, God, put me on the spot. Uh... Um, let, let's have a, a nice general be kind and be valuable to others in what yeah. you do um, if, if you're doing you know building a brand or trying to sell products then you have to constantly think about the value that the that the person the user the customer is getting um, so yeah just thinking outwardly thinking about people around you and how you're interacting and yeah just be a good person for society and try and add value where you can uh, yeah that's three and just as a oh. billboard, and as a billboard, I just have. Um, it would so have to, be a big billboard to put all that on. Yeah, um, <laughs> or small writing, either one. But yeah, <laughs> that could be worked out, and then have some nice big splashes of paint, obviously. With it. Yeah, <laughs> add, add a touch. That. <laughs> cool. Well, I massively, massively appreciate you taking the time to come on here. Um, uh, and guys, like, honestly, get on the website, get some pictures in there, and like, if you're going to just get. But well, a lot of there's some bright colors and there's a lot of abstract stuff there. Just uh, I'm loving the pictures. So go grab some. Thank you.